Good morning, my friends. My name is Tertan Lama Jigme Gyatso Rime Rinpoche. You can just call me Lama Jigme. Welcome to the sixth video in the Tertan training series. And as a sci fi geek, I've now got to reference a movie. The movie I have in mind is The Matrix. Uh, it's been many years since The Matrix came out. Actually, I think it's about 15 years. There is a wonderful sequence in The Matrix. I think it's in the third quarter of the movie where um, the protagonist, Neo, rescues his mentor, Morpheus. And after the rescue, Morpheus and Neo are standing on a rooftop. And Morpheus, transitioning, transitioning from the role of victim back to the role of mentor, asks his student, Neo, are you beginning to believe? And instantly, Neo is crestfallen. He looks down and he says, But Morpheus, the oracle, she told me and Instantly, Morpheus cuts him off and says, she told you exactly what you needed to hear. What I found is to break through the pain glass window of rigidity and uh, perfectionism and fear and performance anxiety, it helps if we dialogue with the idea that we're not going to get the answer that's set in stone. You can get the answer that we need in the moment. Ask a particle physicist. Ask a cosmologist. They will, cosmologist, they'll agree our universe is interdependent and ever-changing. So it makes sense that what might be ideal in one moment might not be ideal in the next moment. So if we dialogue about one subject, and on one hour we get one answer, and we get a different answer the next hour, let's explore the possibility that the universe could have changed in an hour, or a minute, or a second. I recommend beginning. See, learning how to center, easy. Learning how to determine what yes and no is, or what no and yes is, easy. Asking the questions, that's the art. Science is easy. It's a following recipe. You do exactly what you're told in the exact sequence you're told, and you'll get specific results. Like playing with the chemistry kit that you get on your birthday. But the art, there's when you play with the myriad of variables. So the first thing is this, ask questions about inconsequential subjects. For the first week, maybe the first month, things like, should I have a snack now? Should my snack be an apple or a banana? You know, because if you get that wrong, it's not going to harm you. It's not going to harm you at all. So there are low stakes questions. We do that so we can get more and more comfortable with the process. That's crucial. If done properly, dialoguing can help to retrain our intuition. Far too often our intuition is confused for our fear or our greed or our agenda. The clever use of dialoguing can shatter that habit energy. So the first thing is this. Always ask yes-no questions. So for instance, you would never ask, what color should I use? No, you would ask, you know, is, is a specific color optimal? If you get yes or no, then you're able to move on from there. Then you start enumerating colors, which brings a second point. You never want to start with your question. You want to sneak up on it. Why do you do that? Because you want to circumvent 
preconceptions. Allow me to give you an, an example, because that's kind of vague. So let's get specific. Let's pretend uh, George wants to ask out Susie, and so he, dialogue, he wants to dialogue and ask, could it be best for me to ask Susie out for next Tuesday? Well, that's really specific, and it's, there's a lot of preconceptions in there. There are a lot of assumptions. He's assuming he should ask a girl, he should ask people out ever. He should, he's assuming he should date girls. He's assuming he should date or ask out Susie. He's assuming he should ask out Susie on a Tuesday. He just ask, he's assuming they should ask out Susie on that Tuesday. That's too many preconceptions. The answer you get is going to be validating or negating one of those preconceptions. And just like in algebra, where we try to reduce everything to just one or two variables, Likewise, we want to reduce our questions to just one variable. This is also <clears throat> a wonderful exercise for us to become aware of the presence of our preconceptions and so that we can dance with them more skillfully. So, and by the way, we never ask, may I? or should I, or can I? That puts us in a subservient role and will most likely sow the seeds of resentment. And nobody wants that. So we ask, could it be best? Best, because we're not asking for permission, we're seeking guidance. We're not trying to protect, predict the future, we're trying to make the most empowered decision. Number two, we don't ask is, we ask could. Is is about certitude, could is about possibility. We wish to become truly great men and women of the Tao, be able to dance elegantly with the universe. We must move away from specificity to potentiality. That's very important. So we don't ask is, we ask could. We don't ask may I, we ask could it be best? Because that's what we want. We don't want permission. We want to make the best decisions at the best times and, and implement them in the best way that will benefit the greatest number of individuals in the greatest manner. And if it seems like I just took th th your universe from the pinpoint of selfishness and pulled it out to the panorama of universal love, then you're on to something. So what do we learn today? Start with inconsequential question topics. Ask yes or no questions. Ask what um, could be best. Start at, at the greatest possible, um, if at all possible, the most the first preconception, the first assumption, and then work your way in to the specific. Well, let's go back to our friend, uh, George and the girl he wants to date. I forgot her name already. Let's pretend her name is Irene. George and Irene. So the first thing George could ask is, hey, should I date anybody ever? Let's pretend he gets a yes. Great. Then the next question he should ask is, should I date girls? Yes. Great. Could it be best uh, once again, I made the mistake. I used should instead of could. You know, folks, I just washed my mouth. I can't do a thing with it. So the third question might be, um, could it be beneficial for me to ask out Irene? And if he gets a no, then he needs to stop right there. Um, could it be good for me to ask out someone else? Yes. And that's a scary thought. Many people ask me, hey man, how do I know I'm not just making this stuff up? How do I know I'm not just telling my stuff, myself stuff I want to hear? The first time you get an answer you don't expect or you don't want, you know, the kind that makes you want to pout like an adolescent, then you know you've tapped into something bigger than yourself. My friends, if you have any questions about this series, don't be shy. Um, enter them in the comment section below. If you like 
watching my fuzzy face on your computer, then click subscribe. And after you do, look for the gear icon, click that, and click the choice that will allow you to receive YouTube notifications whenever I upload a video. The um, Saturday morning series of weekly webinars, or weekly uh, meditation classes is in full swing. The next series will be the Monday series, and it will begin in November. If you're interested in that, write me a note below. Until next we speak, may you and yours be healthy and happy. Goodbye now.